So when you browse across YouTube, you may see that there is hundreds of icebergs for so many different topics and communities. So I thought it was time that we take a look at a Rainbow Six Siege iceberg, which I have actually made myself. However, I have incorporated some aspects of some other people's icebergs into it as well, and you can find their original icebergs linked in the description. If you guys do not know how an iceberg works, basically at the top is the more surface level and more well-known information, and the further we go down, the more obscure and less well-known it gets. Right, so at the top we have Nighthaven. Now Nighthaven is the private military organization, who in 2019 was contracted by Harry, the leader of Team Rainbow, to work alongside and under Team Rainbow in future operations. This was actually after Nighthaven neutralized pirates who attacked a super tanker, and Harry actually seen the potential. However, it seems like Harry had a different motive, and it was actually to keep Nighthaven closer to Rainbow so no other organization with ulterior motives actually take them. However, it seems like this didn't work out as intended. At the beginning of 2022, Nighthaven broke its ties with Team Rainbow. The next bit I have put Hero Shooter, and that's because recently Ubisoft have changed changed the marketing, they've changed the personality of Siege, to be more in line with those usual values which you find with hero shooters, one of which was updating the logo, and also changing the key art to include the operators, rather than just faceless soldiers. Next up we have the game is training, and that's because us, when we play the game, we are actually going through training simulations that the operators will experience. You see a lot of people ask, are the defenders the bad guys, are the attackers the bad guys, and it's neither, they are all on one big team, and in a real life situation they all work together to neutralize the threat. Next up we're talking about pre reworked maps. Basically most maps in this game have had minor or to major changes ever since they were originally launched in the game. Minor changes being on maps like Coastline where like in VIP instead of it being a hard wall they made it a soft wall which you can now reinforce. Compared to reworks like Favela where the map layout is just pretty much completely different to its original counterpart. Next up we're talking about Outbreak slash Extraction. So Outbreak was actually an event which happened in Operation Chimera. It was a limited time 30 day event where we took the operators out of their comfort zone and put them in this alternative universe where there was an alien parasite which actually broke out. The event was so well received that Ubisoft made an entire spin-off game known as Rainbow Six Extraction which launched in early 2022. On the topic of spin-off games we also have Rainbow Six Mobile which is a from the ground built up siege experience for mobile devices and at the time of upload there is no official release date however there has been multiple closed betas. The final thing that we have at surface level is promised features that are never coming. This is in reference to a lot of features which were announced but have just never came to the game and they've never talked about it again. One of these was a tournament mode which they said they were going to implement into the game game and that just never came, a world cup where you would see countries competing against each other in real life LAN esports form, which I assume they cancelled due to the lockdowns, however since then they haven't said about anything about bringing it back, and some other changes as well such as Zero's camera not burrowing through to the other side unless you enable it, as it currently stands it's close to a year ago since that was announced and has not been implemented in the game. Right so we're going to move down a tier, this stuff you might still know but it gets to be more obscure. Firstly we have Ayana's old victory stance, when Ayana was implemented into the game her victory stance showed a more prominent view of her rear end. However, for some reason Ubisoft's stance on this seemed to change because a few seasons ago they just completely removed it and gave her a default stance like everyone else. They gave no reason as to why they done this and didn't put it in any patch notes. Next up we have Nighthaven default skins and basically any gun that was reused from a normal rainbow operator and then put on a Nighthaven operator, when you had no skin equipped on that gun it would have the Nighthaven logo on the default gun. However, it seems like with recent Nighthaven operators they just stopped doing this completely which is quite sad. Next up is the fact that that Recruit has been removed from the ranked playlist for a good while now, and the only way to still play him in ranked or unranked is if you own no other operators, and the game auto picks him for you. You may have seen my video the other day as to where I said he should come back to ranked and I gave my reasons why. Next up we have Pulse and Habana, this is due to the fact that in the Rainbow Six Siege lore, Pulse and Habana actually were in a relationship together for a good few years, but recently Pulse actually left Team Rainbow to join Nighthaven, who like I said earlier, actually left Team Rainbow as an organisation as well, and doing so, Pulse also broke up with Habana. Next up we have the old lighting and movement, this is just the fact that the game today and the game we played years ago do seem quite different and that's because a lot of things have been reworked such as lighting, movement, you can't drop shot anymore, you can't lean spam, a lot of things people say they miss but in reality made Siege a better game. Next up we have Jaeger shield head, that was the fact that there was a bug going around where you could basically put a deployable shield on Jaeger's head and run around and play the game as usual whilst there is a deployable shield which still had the same mechanics as the deployable shield, it still deflected bullets. So basically you had Jaeger who was immune to headshots and if you were prone, basically any shots, going around shooting people and winning matches. Now next up we have the old original Thatcher Elite skin. Before its current Elite skin launched, this image leaked onto the internet. Ubisoft for whatever reason seemed to cancel this Elite skin and it seems like a lot of this uniform actually went into the mute Elite skin. However, I won't lie, I do think that skin looks pretty cool. Next up we have the Malusi and Oryx swap. Basically when Oryx launched, he actually had the MP5 and when Malusi launched, she had the T5 SMG. In 
October of 2020, it was accidentally revealed in a dev livestream showing off the Tachanka rework that Malusi and Oryx had their weapons switched, and this change officially arrived in the next update. Next we have the pre-nerf Blackbeard, and this is basically the fact that his rifle shield had an insane amount of HP, to the point where it was basically indestructible because it was that strong. Of course now Blackbeard's shield gets destroyed in two shots. Next up we have the Ember Rice skins, and what this is is just a popular seasonal uniform which a lot of people like to use, as these skins blend into maps very well, and people seem to get an advantage out of it. This had made these skins quite infamous in the community. Next up we have the Chicken, which is a very recent exploit, where cheaters actually managed to replace the ban feed with any image of their choice, targeting specific streamers, and all they really used was a little image of a cartoon chicken. A lot of people, including myself, made a bunch of memes about this, and for the most part, a lot of the community found it funny. However, there were some other live streamers who unluckily got a different big white chicken on their screen, if you know what I mean. And on the final level of this iceberg, we have the LGBT representation in Rainbow Six Siege. For a lot of people who don't follow the lore, they don't really know the backstories for a lot of operators, and in the lore there is actually a big representation for this community. Firstly, Pulse is bisexual, Kavera actually has a girlfriend back in Brazil, Osa is transgender, Flores is gay, and Sense is non-binary. Now moving on to the second last tier, the first one I have here is the Zombies on Villa. At one of the spawns, you can actually find a boarded up well, and standing beside this well, you can actually hear some zombie groans coming from the bottom of it. Now this can be a reference to two things, of course it can be a reference to the Outbreak event, which literally happened a season before this map launched, and it can also be a reference to that one scene in The Walking Dead where they try and pull the zombie out of the well. Next up we have censorship, so basically when Ubisoft were going to launch Rainbow Six Siege in China, they were going to start censoring the game quite a bit. For example, they were going to remove blood splatters from the walls, they were going to remove any suggestive content, for example in Strip on Clubhouse, the neon girl was going to be replaced with a pointing hand, they were removing any scenes of gambling, once again this was on Clubhouse and they removed a bunch of the slot machines, and for some reason China doesn't like skulls so they were going to like censor a lot of the skulls, they were even going to remove the skull face paint from Kavera. A lot of the community hated this censorship and as a result Ubisoft swore to only make this in the China version of the game and not do this on the main build. Next up we have Blonde Ella, basically when she was leaked before her release, Ella had blonde hair instead of her iconic green hair. Next up we have Winners Removed from Stadium, basically when Stadium Bravo was added to the ranked pool in Brutal Swarm, they removed the images from under the map which showed SI winners over the years, as well as an image of Macy J which was plastered around the side. Now next we're talking about a moon map being teased, and basically this is just the fact that in both Rainbow Six Siege and Rainbow Six Extraction, Ubisoft have teased us with the concept of going to the moon so many times, whether that be space bundles or the fact that in Ayana's teaser trailer they showed her in space, which led a lot of people into thinking that we were going to get like a space station map or like a map set on a, like a moon base, and the fact in Rainbow Six Extraction it literally says that Team Rainbow need to go to the moon. But as it currently stands, neither game has had any content in space. Next up we have Capitao is Missing, this is basically in the lore every operator has been assigned a squad, and the only operator who has not been assigned a squad is Capitao, meaning that in the lore right now we do not know where he is, what he is doing, and what they're going to be using him for. Next we have Dark Zero's plagiarized weapon skin. It was shown that an artist known as I Am Deadbird, who works for Dark Zero, clearly plagiarized artwork to be used on a Dark Zero weapon skin in Rainbow Six Siege, and although Dark Zero fired him, after the hate calmed down, they just hired him again and they clearly do not care that they stole artwork. It has been shown in multiple occasions as well that he has clearly plagiarized other people's work, but he is still their art director to this day. Invisible IQ is referring to the glitch where you manage to desync your operator player model of IQ and your actual client side player model to basically be invisible, you could run into the map and no one could see you, whilst your actual player model on the server was all the way safe and sound at spawn. This led to the operator IQ being permanently disabled in every single playlist until this exploit was fixed. The final one on this tier is Area F2, which was a free to play mobile game which blatantly ripped off Rainbow Six Siege, to the point where Ubisoft successfully managed to get this game shut down permanently, paving the way for Rainbow Six Mobile to make its way onto mobile platforms. Now we are on the final tier here and I only have three items on it, but I feel like these three are quite important and they're worth talking about. So this first one is extremely weird, I have no idea how this happened, it must be a mistake, I hope no one at Ubisoft done this deliberately, but if you look down the barrel of Mozzie's Pest Launcher, you can see which is undoubtedly a swastika, and I'm sure I don't have to explain to you guys as to why this icon is not very good. Now, what most likely happened was when they were modeling this launcher, a few of the assets inside overlapped a little bit and it made this very unfortunate coincidence. However, I guess there is that possibility until we know otherwise that someone could have actually done this deliberately when they were designing this launcher. It's just a very weird coincidence if it is one and if it is done deliberately, it's in pretty poor taste. Next up we have Rainbow Six Patriots. Rainbow Six Patriots was actually going to be the game that launched before Rainbow Six Siege 
Siege was announced and it was going to have a fully fledged campaign, it was going to have its own multiplayer and everything and after Ubisoft announced it they were quite silent on it for a few years until they officially cancelled it. But the year after cancelling it they announced Rainbow Six Siege. And unfortunately the final item we have on this iceberg is Rule 34. If you do not know what Rule 34 is I'll let you do that research for yourself but Rainbow Six has a massive Rule 34 community with one of the Reddit pages alone having 161,000 members and considering the official main Rainbow Six subreddit having 1.5 million members, having 100k members on just this one topic alone is actually really big. And hey, if that's your cup of tea, don't let me stop you, go enjoy yourself. And so guys, that is my Rainbow Six Siege iceberg, I'm sure I can talk about so much more but that would just take forever, so if you guys did enjoy this video be sure to drop it a comment and like and let me know if I should do another iceberg video adding more content to it. But I thought this was a pretty good start to a Rainbow Six Siege iceberg. So guys, be sure to let me know your thoughts in the comment section below what you think on this iceberg, did you know a lot of this stuff, what was the craziest thing you learned from this and what are your thoughts on it? Be sure to subscribe for more, I'll catch you all later, I love you all, peace.